Google Cloud's Backup and DR service creates backups of your protected data sources according to the schedule defined in your backup plans. Such as this schedule here, where I'm backing up between 7pm and 7am every day and keeping a backup for 7 days. If these backups don't run due to unresolved errors, then you need to be notified so that these errors can be resolved, getting your backups back on schedule. Now when a job fails, we can display it from the dashboard, or we can go to Monitor Jobs. However, if I simply select Failed here, it will bring me to monitor jobs with the correct filters and I can see that I have one failed job. This failed job will also appear in cloud logging. I can go to the Google Cloud Console and go to logging, logs explorer, and then in the query box, I need to use a search name that describes the log name. The only change you'll need to make to what you're seeing here is to change the project that I've highlighted to your project and then do a run query. You may need to change the period of time that you're querying. In this case, I'm looking at the last five minutes, but you can clearly see here, this event here is the same as this event here. Note, we could also modify this query to search for particular event IDs or particular application names or even application types. However, in this example, we're going to focus on simply following up on any event that is written to this log. Now to receive notifications when these events occur, we need to set up what is called a notification channel, which will be alerted via an alert. I recommend you create the notification channel first. To do this, go to monitoring, alerting, and then go to edit notification channels. You can see that there are a wide variety of notification channels already supported, including PagerDuty, Slack, webhooks, which would allow you to communicate with external third-party products, email, SMS, and Cloud PubSub. In this example, we're going to use email. You can see that I already have a configured email address added here. To add your own, you'd simply go add new, enter your email address, and then enter a display name that will be used when we're configuring the alert. Once you've configured the notification channel, we go back to Logs Explorer and select Create Alert. The name of the alert is significant because it will appear as part of the title of the email that you'll receive every time an alert is generated. So make sure you put a meaningful name, such as backup and DR event has occurred. The documentation panel is also very important because the documentation will appear in the email alert that gets sent out. I recommend that you add the text, please log into the management console, and then the URL of the management console. You can learn the URL of your management console by going to the Google Cloud Console, selecting Backup and DR, and then go to Log into the Management Console, right select, go copy link address, go back to your documentation, and paste the URL in. You can see a markdown example of what you will get in the email here. Under Choose Logs to Include in the Alert, you can see that at the moment I have my Backup Recovery Appliance Events log, which is the correct log. The only change you'll need to make is the name of the project. Remember, you could add additional criteria, such as the name of particular applications or application types, uh, or particular events. If you want to validate that this is the correct query, you can use preview logs. Select Next. You now need to select the notification frequency. I recommend you leave the defaults. This means you will receive, at most, one email an hour. So if a succession of job failures occur, possibly due to the same root cause, the first job failure will generate an error, but you will not get another email for another hour. This also generates to known as an incident, and these incidents will be tracked within the notifications section, and these incidents can be manually closed or will automatically closed after seven days. Finally, the most important point, who should be notified, in here we select the notification channel that we created earlier. If your notification channel does not appear, use the refresh button. If you didn't create one, you can create one now, and then come back and use the refresh button to make it appear. Once you've done this, select save, and your alerting policy will have been created. To go and display existing alerting policies, go to Monitoring, Alerting, and you'll be able to see not only the policy, but any incidents that have occurred as a result of this policy. When a job fails, you will clearly receive an email. The format of this email will look like this. In the header of the email, you will see a term alert and backup DR event has occurred. You will see the name of the backup recovery appliance. You'll see the location of the management server, as well as the ID of the management server. The key here, is that the policy documentation section will contain whatever freeform text you entered. Remember in my example, I put the URL of the management console. Finally, let's talk about incidents. When an incident fires because an event has occurred that matches a policy, you will see an incident in the alerting panel. It's very important, particularly if you're in a shared group, that you use this incidents panel to notify each other who is taking care of the incident. And the way that you do that is you find the incident, go to the drop down, go to see all incidents, 
and then acknowledge that particular incident. What you can then do is go to the incident itself to examine what events have occurred to fire that incident. In this case, you can clearly see that I have a failed backup job for a particular server. At this point, I would probably need to go to the management console to further diagnose this. When I'm confident I have resolved the problem, I can close the incident. Note that in this example, I'm not able to close it yet because I have not waited at least three minutes. Once three minutes has passed, I'm now able to close the incident because it occurred more than three minutes ago. In the example I've shown you, I have the ability to create a failed job because I am running an agent-based backup against a server that I've left powered off. However, if you do not have the ability to generate failed jobs, what you can do within our documentation, we will supply you the syntax to create a manually generated error message. To do this, we simply take this text here, replace the project ID field with the name, or rather the ID of your project. Once you've done this, copy the code sample, then go to log entries right, and from the entries right panel, go over to the right to the request body and paste in the request body sample that we provided with the modified project name. Select execute, and provided you get a green 200, which indicates success, you will have written to the logs. How can you prove this? Go back to Logs Explorer, run your query again, and you will see your manually generated error message. If this is the first message to appear in the log, it is the one that will provoke an email. Now, having created a generic alerting policy, which is going to capture all the alerts, so you can see here, I've gone into edit to show you my alerting policy. You can see my name, backup and DR event has occurred. You can see the documentation section. You can see what logs I'm including, which is basically any event that occurs in this log, and then I'm gonna be notified once an hour. However, if I want to become a bit of a power user, what I could do instead is specify specific events to not occur in the generic one. In this case, I'm going to remove four events, one of which I want to be notified about less often, one of which I want to be notified about more often, and two of which I don't want to be notified about at all. What I can do is I can exclude all of those events from the generic one, and then I might set the notification period for that to say, six hours. So I'll only be notified every six hours for an event apart from specific events that I'm more interested in or events I'm less interested in. So in this case, I'm going to keep the same notification channel and hit save. Now that I've configured my generic backup and DR event has occurred in alerting, what I'm going to do is go copy. But in this example, my first one is that I'm going to say snapshot failure has occurred. And the difference here is that the logs that I'm going to include I'm going to change the and not to and, and I'm going to only focus on event ID 43901. So this is the event ID for failed backup jobs, and I'm interested in receiving notifications for them more often. In fact, in this case, I want them every 30 minutes. So I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to copy that policy one more time. But in this case, I'm going to call this policy name job didn't run, and the logs that I'm going to include is just event ID 10085. And in this case, I'm only interested in being told about these once a day. And again, I'll keep the same notification group. Now I have three policy types. A backup and DR event has occurred, excluding four specific errors, two of which I don't want to know about, and one I want to know about more often, and one I want to know about less often. Then I have backup and DR job didn't run. So that's based on a specific event ID that only fires once a day. And snapshot failure has occurred, which fires every 30 minutes, again, based on a specific event ID. You might find in your organization that you will need a different combination of events, but you can see how easily I can create different policies based on different event IDs or even things like application name, and I can send them at different times.